Hi, I'm Arushi Goel. I'm a PhD student at Johns Hopkins University, and I'm going to present this joint work with Ilet Boyle and Ran Cohen on achieving Byzantine agreement with polylog bits per party. To begin with, Byzantine agreement is an interactive protocol that allows a group of parties to agree on one of their inputs, even in the face of some malicious corruptions. And this is achieved by enforcing two properties, namely agreement and validity. Byzantine agreement is a fundamental building block, which is used in many applications, both in cryptography and in distributed computing. The main question that we consider in this work is what is the communication complexity of Byzantine agreement as a function of the number of parties? In particular, we consider the per party communication, which is an interesting open question. And as we will see on the next slide, this question is not simply answered by figuring out the total complexity of the protocol. For simplicity, throughout this presentation, I'm going to use this shorthand notation of O tilde that hides polylogarithmic factors in the number of parties and the security parameter kappa. But first, to quickly recap about what is known in the field of communication efficient Byzantine agreement protocols. Research in Byzantine agreement began with the work of Pese, Shostak and Lamport in the 80s. Soon after, Dalev and Raishuk established that for deterministic Byzantine agreement protocols, all the parties need to communicate at least quadratic many bits. About a decade later, two papers were able to achieve this bounce. About two decades later, a couple of results were able to overcome this lower bound by designing subquadratic randomized Byzantine agreement protocols. And more recently, with the advent of blockchains, a couple of results were able to achieve the same communication, but using an entirely different technique. Now, by looking at this table, it's easy to see that we know of protocols with optimal total communication complexity, but a suboptimal per party communication. And on the other hand, we also know of protocols with a better per party communication, but a suboptimal total communication. And so the question that was left open in the work of King and Saya was whether we can get better communication using cryptography. And this is exactly what we do. We design two Byzantine agreement protocols with polylog bits per party. Our first protocol works in the trusted public key infrastructure model where the keys are generated by a trusted party. This protocol is based on digital signatures. Our second construction works in the more realistic bare PKI model where the parties are allowed to generate their own keys. We designed this protocol based on collision resistant hash functions and on a relatively strong cryptographic assumption of succinctly non-interactive arguments. To clarify the setting, we allow for static corruptions of a little less than one third fraction of the parties. And by static, I mean that the corruptions are allowed to happen at the beginning of the protocol. In order to avoid trivial solutions, we allow these corruptions to take place after the setup phase and our protocol works in the synchronous communication model. We also establish some lower bounds. In particular, we show that some form of private coin setup and cryptography are necessary for our approach. We also show that some natural constructions in the bare PKI model imply snark-like tools. Now, to recap some of the known techniques for breaking this quadratic bits barrier, the first technique requires all of the parties to talk, but they are only needed to talk to a few other parties. This approach results in protocols with a suboptimal total communication, but a reasonable per party communication. The second approach is where all of, not all the parties talk, but the few parties that talk are required to talk to everyone. This approach yields protocols with optimal total communication, but a suboptimal per party communication. In 2013, 
boiled goldwasser and tesaro observed that by combining cryptography with the first approach it's possible to design protocols with polylog communication locality and what that means is that every party is only required to talk to polylog other neighbors this makes the communication graph even more sparse however the messages that the parties send in their protocol are very long which is why they are not able to achieve optimal communication the rest of this talk is organized as follows i will begin with a quick recap of the bgt protocol i will also highlight exactly where their protocol falls short in achieving optimal communication i will then move on to discuss how we resolve this issue and then finally proceed to discuss some limitations and barriers of this approach the bgt protocol proceeds in three main steps the first step is where the parties reach almost everywhere agreement this is where a significant fraction of the honest parties are able to reach agreement however the corrupt parties can keep some of the honest parties isolated This particular step requires polylog rounds locality and per party communication. Moreover, this particular step does not require any setup or cryptographic assumptions. The second step is where the parties reach certified almost everywhere agreement. This is where the parties that had already reached agreement collectively generate a certificate. this certificate is a sort of proof that allows them to prove that this agreement was reached via honest means this step however requires a linear per party communication and moreover in order to enable verification of the certificate we need to make use of a public key infrastructure the last step is where the parties reach full agreement and this is where the parties that were already in agreement try to send the certificate to the isolated parties this certificate is however distributed in a load balanced manner this is because the honest parties cannot distinguish between other isolated parties and corrupt parties and for communication optimality we cannot enable all of the parties to talk to all other parties therefore each party simply samples a small random subset of parties and sends the certificate only to that small subset and the hope is that since enough number of honest parties are already in agreement that they will collectively be able to talk to all isolated parties the problem with this protocol is that the size of the certificates uh is extremely large which is why this protocol fails to achieve optimal communication in order to explain this further i'm now going to zoom in on this particular step in their protocol so the first step in bgt is actually based on the almost everywhere community committee election of king et al this is where all of the parties so almost all of the parties agree on a polylog sized committee the parties are also able to establish a reliable path through which they can communicate to this committee this is achieved by establishing an overlay network of communication tree each node in this tree is assigned polylog many parties and each party is assigned to polylog many leaf nodes this assignment of parties is done dynamically via their protocol and the parties that are assigned to the root node are referred to as the supreme committee or the root committee the security guaranteed by this tree is that if only a few parties were corrupt to begin with then the corrupt parties cannot take over the entire tree and what that means is that a vast majority of the nodes in this tree remain good however what the corrupt parties can do is cause some of the honest parties to remain isolated and again what that means is that they can cause all of the paths from these isolated parties to the root node to be obstructed by at least one bad node for certified almost everywhere agreement the parties in the root node 
run a potentially communication inefficient Byzantine agreement protocol and compute an output Y. They then send this value Y to all of the parties using the communication tree. The parties then sign this message Y using some form of signatures and send these signatures back to the root node. The root committee then aggregates these signatures, generates a certificate, and sends the certificate back to all of the parties. This protocol seems to achieve almost all of the properties that we need from our Byzantine agreement protocol. However, the only problem is that the size of these certificates is extremely large. And so it seems like if we are somehow able to shrink the size of these certificates, we'd be able to solve the problem that we are considering. And that is exactly what we do. We introduce a new primitive called succinctly reconstructed distributed signatures that allow us to generate small certificates and achieve optimal communication complexity. Let me first quickly recap what the goal of the certificate is. So the certificate is used to convince the isolated parties that a majority of the honest parties already accept this value Y. For communication optimality, we require that the size of the certificate should only be polylogarithmic in the number of parties. And moreover, since this certificate is generated in a distributed manner, we require that the parties are only required to communicate polylog many bits throughout this generation and distribution process. Now, the first question that we ask is whether existing distributed signature schemes, such as multi-signatures, can help us solve this problem. Multi-signatures allow us to aggregate n signatures into a single multi-signature whose size is independent of n, and this aggregation can be done in small batches. However, while the size of these signature itself is small, in order to verify, we need to know the list of all of the signers that participated in the aggregation of this multi-signature. And in our case, since this list of signers is linear in the number of parties, this single-handedly blows up the size of the certificates. And therefore, multi-signatures cannot be used. In fact, all other existing digital sign sorry, distributed signature schemes suffer from similar issues, which is why we introduce a new notion of distributed signatures, which we refer to as succinctly reconstructed distributed signatures. These signatures are defined in the PKI model, where every party has an associated verification key and a signing key. The parties can use their respective signing keys to sign any message of their choice. The aggregation of these signatures is done in polylog sized batches. And for succinctness, we require that throughout the aggregation process, the parties are only required to communicate polylog many bits. For verification, it suffices to verify that enough number of parties participated in the aggregation process and unlike multi-signatures, we do not need to know the exact identities of these participating parties. For robustness, we require that even if some of the parties are corrupt, the honest parties should still be able to generate an accepting signature. And for unforgeability, we require that if the corrupt parties do not have access to, access to signatures from honest parties on a particular message, that they should not be able to forge a valid signature on that message. And again, just to repeat, at no point do we require every party, any party to send more than polylog bits. We present two constructions of succinctly reconstructed distributed signatures. Our first construction is in the trusted PKI model. This is where a trusted party generates all of the keys it then sends the signing keys to the respective parties and publishes all of the verification keys. This is the same setting as the one used in the second approach for breaking the quadratic bits barrier. And we design our SRDS scheme in this model using digital signatures, which are known from one-way functions. 
Our second construction is in the bare PKI model. This is where every party is allowed to generate its own keys and then publish the verification keys. This model gives the corrupt parties a little more power in the sense that the corrupt parties are now allowed to generate their keys adaptively after looking at the verification keys of the honest parties. In this model, we design our SRDS scheme from digital signatures, collision resistant hash functions, and from a strong cryptographic assumption of succinctly non-interactive arguments. Plugging these two constructions in the BGT framework gives us our two Byzantine agreement protocols with the required communication in the respective PKI models. Now, I will proceed to talk about some of the limitations and barriers of our approach. To recap, our Byzantine agreement protocols allow us to go from almost everywhere agreement to full agreement in a single round using public key infrastructure and cryptography. And so the question that we ask is whether this is really required. We show that in order to go from almost everywhere agreement to full agreement in a single round, some form of private coin setup is indeed necessary. Otherwise, there exists a party who talks to at least linearly many other parties. Moreover, if we use a PKI to go from almost everywhere agreement to full agreement in a single round, then we establish that cryptography is necessary. And we do this by showing that if one-way functions do not exist, then again, there exists a party who needs to talk to linearly many other parties. We also show that some natural constructions of SRDS, particularly ones based on multi-signatures in the bare PKI model imply snark-like tools. To summarize, we present two constructions of Byzantine agreement with polylog bits per party. Our constructions present a trade-off between setup and cryptographic assumptions. We also establish some barriers and limitations towards our approach. Finally, to end with some interesting open questions, the first of which is a direct outcome of our result, which is whether it's possible to design SRDS in the bare PKI model from standard cryptographic assumptions. We show that in order to go from almost everywhere agreement to full agreement in a single round, cryptography is necessary. However, this leaves open the question about whether it's possible to design Byzantine agreement protocols with similar communication using a different approach information theoretically. And of course, there are the standard questions about whether similar results can be achieved with adaptive security or in the asynchronous communication model. Also, the question about achieving similar results with optimal, optimal corruption threshold of n over 2 is also open. And in fact, in this setting, no subquadratic Byzantine agreement protocols are known. And with that, I conclude. Thank you.